Welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ron Man, and in today's episode, I will review A Nightmare on Elm Street for the NES. Also, if you're new here and you like my content, please make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons, as well as that bell notification so you stay up to date with Ron Man Gaming. A Nightmare on Elm Street was developed by Rare and published by LJN for the NES back in October of 1989. It really goes without saying, but this game is of course based off of the horror movie franchise of the same name. A Nightmare on Elm Street is a side-scrolling action platformer and just so happens to be one of the few NES games that is compatible with the NES 4 score or the NES Satellite, which means this game is capable of up to four-player simultaneous co-op. Unfortunately, I've never played this game with anyone, so I won't be able to judge the multiplayer function, but I do think it's cool that it is an option. Now this is one of those NES games that's harshly judged by many people, and I presume that many of those people did nothing more than watch the AVGN episode and without ever playing this game, decided that it is indeed one of the worst NES games ever. Although this game is far from perfect, it is by no means a bad game. So here's how it works. You take control of a teenager. It's not made clear who the teenager is. There are no specific references to any of the teenagers from the movies, but your goal is to make it to the final stage and kill Freddy once and for all. By the way, quick side note, the original concept for this game actually had you playing as Freddy with the goal of killing the teenagers. Kind of wish they made it that way instead. What you're looking at here are photos from the prototype. Issue 8 of Nintendo Power also briefly mentions this game with a picture of an awesome looking title screen along with another early screenshot. Anyway, there are seven levels which are all accessed from Elm Street, which itself is a hub world. There are several houses, including Freddy's house, the junkyard, the cemetery, and a high school. Each level is divided into a couple of sections. In each section, your goal is to always collect a certain number of bones before moving on to the next section. The end of every level contains a boss fight against some incarnation of Freddy. Once you beat a level, you'll return to Elm Street where you'll move on to the next level. Much like the films, in this game it is a challenge just to stay awake. Up at the top of the screen, you'll notice a meter. This meter actually tracks your sleepiness, while in the waking world, the enemies are weaker and less aggressive. Once that meter depletes, you'll fall asleep and enter a nightmare. Although the nightmare world is more challenging, you you do, however, have access to the Dream Warrior powers. Throughout the stages, along with collecting bones, you'll be able to collect different outfits. These outfits offer you different powers, so make sure to keep an eye out for these. Also, you'll come across coffee and boom boxes. The coffee refills your sleepiness meter and the boom box will wake you out of a nightmare and return you to your own world. Also, when you're in the nightmare world, if you spend enough time there, Freddy will eventually show up and attack you, as seen by the iconic Freddy's trademark coming. These fights are really just quite silly. They mostly feel like a waste of time. Freddy merely walks back and forth until he runs away after you've dealt enough damage to him. It's really easy to deal with him here too. To me, these encounters just feel like a, I don't know, silly waste of time. You know, I do kind of understand where they're coming from because in the movies, Freddy would attack with little warning, so I get that, but you know, it's still at the end of the day just kind of feels like a waste of time. For an NES game, I think the graphics are pretty good and I do really enjoy the soundtrack, but considering how David Wise composed the music for this game, it's really no surprise. Now this game is really not the dumpster fire that some people make it out to be, but there are some issues. The first thing I'd like to talk about is this game's theme and atmosphere. Many people have criticized how this game feels more like a generic spooky Halloween game rather than a Freddy Krueger game. Well, yeah, I agree, but I don't happen to see that as a bad thing. I think this game is great for getting into the Halloween mood, and it does have many references to the film franchise such as the trademark symbol. My biggest problem with this game are the controls paired with the level design. Allow me to <clears throat> elaborate. Overall, this game isn't actually too hard, but there are certain design choices which cause the difficulty to rise, so in other words, this game is difficult for the wrong reasons. 
First, I'd like to talk about the enemies. These bats are the worst. In many sections, they respawn indefinitely. When they show up, they begin making their way toward you. If you've played Wizards and Warriors, you know exactly the type of horse crap I'm talking about here. These bats are just so annoying. Sometimes they'll end up in front of you, which is great because you can just attack them. But sometimes they fly down and into the top of your head. But you can't attack upward, and depending on where you are, this could be a real problem. Like this. This would be so much less annoying if the bats didn't infinitely respawn, because you could just kill them and move on. But no, you basically have to just deal with them as you go. Not always, but sometimes zombies will have spawn points, and sometimes you'll unknowingly be standing on a zombie spawn point, then, uh, then that happens. I don't know what causes a zombie to spawn, but in most good games, an enemy will spawn just as his section appears on the screen, which allows the player to know where the spawn point is. Not in this game, however. We also have many platforming sections. Most of them are reasonable, yes, but there are a few where you'll want to pull your hair out. There are some gaps that are just a little too large for a simple jump. Not only that, but these silly jumps are usually paired with numerous enemies, so you may burn through several of your lives just to jump a gap. Speaking of lives, you have five along with five continues. That sounds like a lot, yes, but with how many times you'll get knocked into a bottomless pit, it's not as generous as it sounds. You also don't have a life meter. You die after getting hit four times. You're gonna have to make a mental note of how many times you've been hit. Also, your sleep meter drains constantly, but it drains faster when you take damage. Because of that, and the fact that it looks identical to the boss life meter, it's no wonder why most gamers new to this game will think that the sleep meter is a life meter. The last negative point I want to address are the controls. Now, they're not the worst, but they are floaty and sometimes unresponsive. There were many times where I would press A or B to jump or attack, and nothing would happen. I'm guessing that something in-game has caused the inputs to be eaten, but who knows what that is. So that's A Nightmare on Elm Street. Yes, it does have quite a few flaws, but overall the flaws don't ruin the experience, and I do think this is a neat little game that's especially fit for this time of year. Now, if you've been watching my channel for any length of time, you may know that I absolutely love reading Nintendo Power. And I just so happened to stumble across an interview with Robert England, and he actually lists his top five horror movies, so let's take a look. In volume 30, on page 93, he says his favorites are The Hitcher, White of the Eye, Rosemary's Baby, Sisters, and at number one, The Innocents. I haven't seen most of these movies, but I have seen Rosemary's Baby and The Innocents, and I have to tell you, I love The Innocence. It was released in 1961, it's black and white, it was actually shot in widescreen, which is crazy because that's 1961. It's a great movie, check out The Innocence. Oh, and, and play A Nightmare on Elm Street, that game's good too. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, please make sure to like and subscribe, have a happy Halloween, and I'll see you in the next video.